The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you. And let me just begin by uh, extending my uh, um, appreciation for the, the chairman. I know his arguments are well-intentioned, as are mine. Uh, I believe that we both completely agree and completely support Congress's solemn duty under Article I of the Constitution to authorize the commitment of U.S. troops to foreign hostilities. And perhaps there will be another <clears throat> example where we can uh, join forces in that. But that is not the issue here. Allow me to quote the actual War Powers Act from Title 50 of the United States Code. This procedure applies to, quote, the removal of United States <clears throat> Armed Forces engaged in hostilities outside the territory of the United States, end of quote. <clears throat> this has always meant historically and today U.S. troops being directly involved in live fire combat. As the Department of Defense has repeatedly confirmed, U.S. Armed Forces are not engaged in hostilities against the Houthi forces in Yemen. This resolution is directing us to remove troops that simply, Madam Chair, are not there. Even the aerial uh, refueling of coalition jets, which does not constitute traditional hostilities, ended last November. This resolution, in my judgment, misuses uh, the tool to try to get at the different issue of security assistance to third countries. It provides no clear decisions on which forms of assistance are cut off. It does not address the humanitarian catastrophe inside Yemen. And alarmingly, it completely ignores the destabilization role that Iran is playing in Yemen and the region. This irresponsible measure is trying to hammer a square, a square peg in a round hole. This resolution really stretches the definition of hostilities to cover non-U.S. military operations by other countries. It reinterprets U.S. support to those countries as, quote, engagement in hostilities, unquote. This overreach has dangerous implications far beyond Saudi Arabia. This approach will not allow any, it will now allow any single member to use this privileged mechanism to second guess U.S. security cooperation relationships with more than 100 countries throughout the world. Under this model, if one member doesn't like something that any of our security partners does overseas, that member can force quick consideration of a resolution directing the removal of U.S. forces from hostilities in or affecting that situation. It no longer matters that U.S. forces are not actually conducting those hostilities. This could impact our assistance to Israel. It could affect our cooperation with our NATO allies. It could impact counterterrorism cooperation with African nations in the Sahel. We could recklessly undo critical security relationships that we have spent decades building. That is not what the War Powers Resolution has ever meant, and I don't think that's what Congress designed it to do, and it should not be used in this way now. And no one is saying that U.S. security assistance to Saudi Arabia or anyone else is beyond congressional scrutiny. Congress has many tools at its disposal. Our committee receives regular arms sales notifications. Congress can condition or cut off security assistance through targeted legislation or the annual appropriations process. But this resolution is the wrong tool. It is vague and irresponsible. It will create new doubts for our partners and allies around the world. Uh, and for those reasons, uh, Madam Chair, I strongly oppose uh, this measure and I reserve the balance.